your mind starts going and trying to make up stories. You got to give enough to the viewers so they can start making up stories about what the photo's about. I would call it a little bit cheap, you know, kind of technique of finding a nice background and just waiting for somebody to walk through it. You want people to linger on your photos. You don't want them to just be stuck and move on. At the end of the day, that's what um, you, you want to create an emotion with the viewer. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm here with award-winning photographer Dotan Sagi. Dotan has published many photography books and specializing in black and white photography. And today he's going to be critiquing your photos. Hello, Dotan. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Martin. It's good to be with you. Uh, thanks for having me on. Perfect. It. So for anyone who is joining us for the first time, the idea is that I'm going to show you uh, the photos of people who submitted their photos and I would like to ask you for constructive critique, probably as if they were your own. Sounds good. I'll, I'll do my best. I don't know if you know my method. I, I, I teach a method in my workshops and I, I have this online workshop as well, but I, I like teaching in person better. <laughs> and one of the things that I teach, uh, and, and this is happening, it's starting to happen again, by the way, uh, you know, with the pandemic kind of going away. And uh, I, I actually had a, a workshop in, in Venice in the fall uh, with Leica. So it's, it's, it's starting to happen again. Um, and one thing I always teach my students is both for looking for the right photograph as well as when they're editing their work um, to look at the photograph or through the viewfinder with uh, D, I, and M. So this is a methodology that uh, I teach, which is basically always look uh, at things through a uh, kind of three different criteria, design, information, and moment. And so this is how I'm going to review these images. It, it allows also when I review my own images, I do the same thing. And it allows me to kind of keep a distance because, you know, we tend to when it's our photos, it's our babies. And we, we, it's hard yeah. to be uh, <laughs> to, to judge your own photography. So uh, it really helps to have a tool like this to remain objective. So that's that's really the, the challenge. <laughs> All right. So let's look do it. To it. So All right. let's take a look at the first one. What do you think? All right. So. Um, I uh, so this is a, a black and white. It looks like a woman in a coat um, looking back at a crowd in the fog, or some you know there's some smoke that's kind of obstructing the view of the of the background. So if I look at it through the prism of, through the lens of design, purely design, I think you know the design here with the subject centered in the middle and. Um, you know, all this mystery around it. And there's a very good figure to ground. So we're going to like throw terms in there, which some of your viewers might know, some might not. Essentially, figure to ground means contrast between the subject and the background so that the subject pops. That's all figure to ground is. So there's great figure to ground. Um, and so so I think, you know, in terms of design, it's actually quite pleasant. And it's a photo that, you know, if you see it in a stack of other photos, it kind of pops out. So because the design is so deliberate you know there's no it's very minimalist in, in a way so that's i think for the, the design is quite you know quite nice the if i go to the information remember so it's like the, this acronym of dim design information moment so if i go to information um i would say the information is not so great here but you know sometimes it's intended by the photographer to have a photo that's a little bit mysterious or that you know lends itself to different interpretations but if this was you know photojournalistic or documentary in nature and i'm just being shown this particular photo i can't see the face of the subject so i don't really know what they look like or what expression they have which is very important you know as humans we it's something that we uh you know we read a lot into so not being able to see the face of the subject we you know we don't know um and so there's very little, it's a very mysterious photo in terms of information. And, you, you know, you may or may not like that. I think, you know, in, in my case, I, I would say I would have preferred a little bit more information, like give me something at least to kind of, I, I like to have at least enough information for me to make a story, to make up a story in my mind of what's going on, even if it's not the actual truth of what the photo represents. I like to give my viewers when I take a photo enough that they can make up a story around it. And here I feel like I'm sh a little bit short of that. 
Uh, I'm a little bit shortchanged here. Uh, not enough in, in the subject itself. And then the background is also so smoky. Um, I don't know if it's a crowd of people watching a game or if they're protesting or, I mean, and I don't know, maybe I haven't looked at it long enough. But usually these things kind of should come to you fairly quickly. Because uh, people, when they see a photo and they can't make sense of it, they just go to the next one. So that's why I like to give viewers in my own photos enough that they can cling on to the photo and stay with it a little bit longer. And that, that's really the, the goal, you know, when you're showing your work to somebody else, that they stay longer on each photo. So this one, I feel like it's not enough to make me stay. So that's on the information side. And in terms of the moment, I would say there's also, I don't know that, I mean, the moment, I guess, would be more... I guess, uh, tied to the design here where maybe this is someone passing by in the foreground and they're in the middle at the moment that the photo is taken. Um, it's also the smoke and the environment. You know, maybe there's something that provocated that, you know, that, that uh, made that smoke happen. Uh, maybe a flare in a, you know, a game or something. And so maybe the mo that, that's the moment. But it's not a, I would say it's not a super strong moment. Uh, it's just the, the yeah, it's it, so in other words, you know, if, so if information is lacking and the moment is not, you know, a peak moment, um, then this photo is all about design. Mm hmm. And, you know, that might be fine to somebody to have, you know, some photos actually stand out, especially like minimalist photos, things like that. Sometimes design is enough to carry a photo. You don't need an information or, or moment that much. So, you know, so that, that but that, this is a photo, you know, when you review it uh, as, as your own, you know, work, you, you have to be aware this is all based on the design. And, mm -hmm. you know, then you have to ask yourself, is the design strong enough to carry the photo by itself? Um, so in this case, I mean, I'm still not um, totally sold that, that it is in this case, but uh, but it might be for someone else, you know, so it, it, people like different kinds of, of photos. All right. I'm more of a documentary person, so I like to have a little more of a story and information behind it. Ah, thank you. All You're right, welcome. moving on. All right, so, um, so okay, so the second photo, I'm gonna go and use, you'll hear this, I mean, by the end of this, you, you're gonna be <laughs> tired of hearing about DIM, design information moment, but this is, you know, how, my method, so I'm gonna follow it again. And in this case, the design is actually for for an urban environment that is, you know, looks gonna, you know, could be fairly chaotic and so on. The design is very well thought out. Uh, and very, I would say, pretty well executed given the circumstances of where this is shot. So um, this is, you know, in, I, I would imagine some suburb or, you know, kind of a dense urban environment with lots of tall buildings and cars and streets and, and so on. And in this case, um, there's a symmetry here where you have those three cars, the tree spank in the middle, the buildings are kind of bookending uh, the photograph, you have one building on one side, another on another side. Uh, even those cones are, are placed, you know, sort of almost at the third. And then you have this, uh, you know, this young uh, adolescent boy just uh, crossing the uh, crossing the screen here uh, and he's on the on the third so I would say des design is clearly has been thought through you can even see that his face is popping up in a blank you know one of the few very few uh, blank areas of the screen so you it actually the figure to ground at least for his torso and his face they're they're you know the is the figure to ground is pretty good uh, so uh, not for the rest of his body it's kind of more against the car but you can see his foot and you know so there's no problem distinguishing the subject here and so design wise i would say it's you know it's well executed for where it's at you know whether you know this is uh uh, you know, it depends what, you know, what the photo is about. And, and I, I would see this maybe as part of a documentary and like a larger body of work where uh, I'm not sure as a street photograph that the, you know, the design is enough to carry the photo mm -hmm. here. But, you know, if this was like part of a series of um, of photographs on some, uh, you know, suburb somewhere and it was telling the story of, of people living there, maybe that, that, you know, that it would make sense. You know, the design would be strong enough for that. As a street shot, nah, I don't know if it's, you know, this is not the, it, it's the photographers working with some very challenging backgrounds here. So, um, and, and, you know, and it's layered. So that's the other, another part of this design that, that is, you know, a positive here. There's, you got the, the, the subject and the cars, 
then the tree, and then the, the uh, building. So there's several layers to this, so there's a little bit of interest there. Okay, so now if I go to the information, um, I mean, this is a, uh, a young person carrying something. I'm not sure there's a bag. It looks like there's a bag, and he's just walking. So, and I mean, you can tell what the environment is like. So there is information there in terms of representing the kind of environment that the subject is evolving in. But uh, there's, other than that, I don't really know. Like, this photo doesn't tell me much about the person other than where they live or where they, you know, where they're walking. So, and I don't really get more information than the person is walking, uh, carrying some kind of bag. So th there's not a ton of information there. It's more circumstantial. Uh, like, this is where the person is. As far as the moment, I would say that's probably the weakest point of this photo, which is... Um, it's kind of, you know, it, it's it's done a lot in street photography where if there's nothing interesting in the street, photographers will just photograph somebody walking through a background. So, you know, people do that a lot with, uh, uh, you know, there's like an advertisement that is interesting that, you know, maybe I can have somebody walk through the frame with the advertisement in the background or I don't know. It's, it's, it's a typical kind of, I would call it a little bit cheap, you know, kind of technique of finding a nice background and just waiting for somebody to walk through it. And uh, and sometimes it's, you know, there's an interesting juxtaposition because the person walking through it is, you know, kind of plays to the background. There's something about them that's either completely opposite to the background or in this case, I mean, the 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 person who's walking through, you know, you'd imagine this is just somebody who lives there, happens to, I don't know, maybe he's coming back from school or something. Um it, there's nothing really, you know, transcending about the person who's walking through. So I would say the, the moment of him walking through and being at the third of the frame where it's, you know, it, it, again, I think it's an image that, it, that's more carried by its design or wants to be carried by its design rather than by information or, or moment. So and, and that's fine. You know, I think when we learn photography we all first go you know when if you read photography magazines or blog or whatever it's mostly about design like the, mm. the, that's that's the part that people i think uh, master first and and i think it's a good one to work on first you know you've learned the rule of thirds and and all these other things that can make your images you know better and i think here this is you know the case of you know there's definitely effort there you know to make the design work Again, you know, just like with the first photo, is can this photo carried only by design, you know, when information and moment are not so present? I don't know. I I, I mean, I, I think it's well executed for where it's shot and, and the, you know, this could have been a lot messier, you know, in terms of <laughs> <Okay>. design. <laughs> uh, so I think it's well done for where it was shot. and But the, it, it's a challenging thing to pull off in terms of design in this type of environment. And uh, and the fact that there's not information in, in moment to really support it. Uh, I'm, you know, I would say like just like the first photo, it's it's um, it's nice enough. Uh, it, uh, but again, I would like to see more in uh, information and 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 moments so that everything can work together to really lift up the photo. Ah, okay. Uh, moving on <laughs> to the next picture. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. This is uh, interesting. Uh, so this has a lot more. So, okay. So again, if I look through D, I, and M, I'm going to start, uh, uh, some people are going to start getting mad that <laughs> this is, it, it's so methodical, but I, I like going, you know, do, no, doing I like it, it. that way. Um, so here, uh, it's a, this is a much more mysterious, this, this is more provocative. So like in, in terms of the first two photos, I'm not sure that I got enough from them or it made me want to look enough that I had any kind of emotion. It was more like, Oh, okay, nice. You know, I can see what where what the photographer wanted to do design wise, and it's you know cool that they made the effort. Here, um, I'm more. I would say this is emotionally more provocative because there is a silhouette um, that is kind of framed in a in a window in the background, and very interesting how the the position of that body. And I don't know if it's a mannequin or an actual person, but it's a very unusual. Uh, you know, way of portraying somebody. Uh, it's it's mysterious. You can't see the face of the person, but this is more about the silhouette and the stance, the body stance, uh, the body position, 
and and interpreting what it is is this person you know dead or <laughs> is this just a mannequin laying you know against a wall so but your mind starts going and trying to make up stories and this is what i meant with the first photo you got to give enough to the viewer so they can start m making up stories about w what the photo's about even if it's not you know in this case i bet you know all the things i just said that's actually not what the scene was about. But the fact that I'm going there uh, is, means that the photo is making me think, which in itself is a big success. So I, I, I appreciate that in photos when they start making you think and making you question things. Um, so f just but staying with the design, I think this is very well executed in terms of design because you, you have, you know, again, that figure to ground. You can clearly see the there's no um, you don't know if it's a mannequin or a person, but there's no. Uh, question that there's a, a human body, uh, um, fake or, or, or not, that's um, in the center of the frame, center top of the frame. Um, there's the 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 way the light is, um, you know, represented in this photo. The there's some natural vignetting that that's going on where the the center is bright and the you know all the uh, surroundings are are dark. Really, really draws your eye to to the middle. So that's you know it's something you want. It's it's hard to focus on the subject when there's bright stuff on the edges of a photo. So in here, natural you know the the natural frame that is created really draws you uh, to this. So um, so I think that you know in terms of design, it's 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 well executed. Uh, the information here, it's really more about the mystery <laughs> or the, <laughs> yeah. the, the lack of, of information. There's enough information to kind of make you think of many things, which is all you want really in the information. When I say information, people assume, oh, you have to give people every single detail of what's going on. Not necessarily. The, the, the way you know whether your information part of your photo is successful is if it makes people think and if it makes people come up with stories. That's the only thing that matters. How much information you give or how little does not matter as long as it you have enough there that people will react to it. That's all that matters. And in terms of the moment, um, here it's really the body position with the feet. I mean, it's really about the feet uh, that, that are up like this. Uh, that makes you think, nah, it can't be a person. It's got to be a mannequin. But then you're going back and forth and you're not sure. And, and what is he doing there? And what are those buildings in the background? So there's also the layering there. Um, so it's it's not a, a peak moment, but it's more the, the kind of like discovery you're like stumbling upon this mysterious silhouette that's kind of the you know kind of triggers that idea of a moment so i i like that one uh it's it's uh it's, it's different and 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 makes you react so very cool thank you that that was very interesting i never never thought about that but uh yeah you're right it makes you think and create your own ideas mm-hmm yeah. All right. At the end of the day, that's what um, you, you want to create an emotion with the viewer. Uh -huh. And um, this is I, I mean, I, I this is how I think photos, street photos, especially and, and documentary and photojournalistic photos are judged. What kind of emotion does it leave the, the viewer with at the end of the day? So that's uh, yeah. all right. So, Moving on. All right. Then moving on to the next one. So uh, here, this is a street uh shot of i mean it looks like a businessman with a mask and um there's this nice kind of side light that's coming through and there's another person standing on the other side of the street and it's a pretty clean design where even though it's an urban environment there's not a lot in the street i don't see any cars or anything it looks like maybe it's a pedestrian street um, but the way the light is projected uh, a lot of the photo is is in the is in complete darkness and then you just see that that uh you know it's maybe morning light that's kind of coming through uh you know between buildings and and just casting this this spotlight uh that that is uh lighting up those two subjects so uh, design wise i'd say you know this is a, one of the shots that's all about the light uh, and I think from that perspective, the light is beautiful. I love that, you know, the photographer lets things fall into complete darkness. Uh, th there's a little bit of a school of thought or, you know, sometimes I hear students say, you know, oh, you can't let things fall into complete black or be completely blown out. Like everything, you know, has to be, 
within you know like your tonal range has to be maximum and, mm-hmm. and you, you know so um and i don't agree with that i think there's lots of really great photographs where things are blown out and it works uh you know you have a subject with a completely blown out background but it still works and you have photos like this where you have uh, you know, things that fall in complete darkness and it, it also works. So um, I, I think that that's, um, um, you know, a great thing to, to, to work with, with complete dark or, you know, or, or some, if it, it, you know, if it lends itself to, to the photograph. So if, I have no problem with the, the fact that things are, are falling into black. And I think in a lot of ways it simplifies the design and makes it, you know, you, makes you, focused much more on the subjects uh, in terms of you know so we're staying we're still in that d of dim uh staying with the design uh of things i'd like is that the m- main character here to me anyway is the guy uh in the suit with the mask mm-hmm. all the way to the right and i don't love that he's so far to the right like to me is almost like falling off the frame it's very close he's, he's very close from uh um being cut off <laughs> like it's you know w- w- he's within a just a tiny tiny bit where his arm could have been cut off his his hand is going up like maybe he's trying to uh protect his eyes from the sun or something or maybe he's hailing a cab i, I don't know there's something going on there but he's so far to the right of the frame that i'm almost losing him and the other person is all the way at the other end of the frame and I guess slightly better position, but not quite at the third where you know, typically like to have people. So it's this odd placement where there's a big void in the middle and nothing at the thirds and, and the subjects are kind of off to the side. And I'm not sure um, that's ideal. I would have loved to see the the at least the main character like at the third or further from the from the edge. Mm-hmm. And it's something that's harder to do when it's a vertical shot you know I, that, yeah. that's i i tend to prefer horizontal and i think you know we all do because we see horizontally that's kind of how our eyes see so vertical shots are a little bit unnatural not that i never i mean i use uh, vertical sometimes when it's really necessary um and i could argue that here maybe it wasn't uh when i, I went to photojournalism school uh, i would come back with some vertical shots and my teacher um, the professor would always say well are you, are you trying to shoot for the cover like this because <laughs> the, the uh the uh you know photographers f- photojournalists especially they only use vertical shots for the cover of a magazine there's not really a lot of use otherwise i mean maybe if you do a whole page and then the page next to it is text but if the photo is going to be used in some kind of you know paper magazine or something you want to shoot horizontal if the photo is going to be used in a blog or an online article or something you want to use horizontal it's it's very hard to present vertical like there's not a lot of places that it works you know in terms of use and it, if when it does work it's for the cover of, ma- of a magazine so i would say you know try to shoot horizontal unless you, the subject really requires uh it, for, for it to be vertical so, so in in this case the portrait orientation i don't think is is the was the right choice and it's you know as a consequence the subjects are placed in sort of odd places so i don't love that part of the design in terms of so let's now go to the information uh, information here it's clear what's happening but it also is clear that it's to me is not that interesting. Oh, yeah. It's again, somebody walking through a background. So this is, I think, another case of a photographer finding, oh my God, this is, I love the light coming through this building. Let me wait. And oh my God, and am I lucky? There's somebody standing right in that light to the left. Maybe if I wait for somebody walking through, then I've got like the, you know, the photo of the year. So th- this is um, one of those shots where there's not ha- a lot happening in the street. and. Uh, people sort of resort to I'm just going to wait for somebody to walk through the frame and that will be my and so it's not information wise there's not a lot in it that's interesting it's it's not as you know thought provocative as the last photo we saw and then if I go to DIM if I go to moment uh, the moment is just somebody walking through a beam of light uh, with a mask and either hailing a cab or about to cover their eyes because the sun's too strong. It's not that it, it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't make me dream of like a beautiful story. It's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. a guy 
in a suit walking through the street. So again, I think we're back to a photo kind of like the first two that that relies mostly on design. And if it if the design, you know, there, there's some great photographers who work, you know, with that sort of premise in mind where information and moment are not that important. Uh, I'm thinking like Alan Scheller, for example, uh, you know, shoots in New York. He's got, you know, this is very much of an Alan Scheller kind of uh, type of uh, frame where you've got, you know, you're working with light and shadows and it's about people passing through the frame and stuff. It's just if you do that, you have to nail it like you know, perfect. And it's got to be like this amazing design. And I, th I think the design here has flaws. Um, it, it is, you know, there's some aspects that are good. You know, like I said, the, 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 I like, I like the, the dark areas and I like the, the quality of the light is great and stuff. But the placement of the subjects and everything doesn't work for me. And, and it, the subjects are not, you know, um, uh, don't have a strong enough relationship with mm. the background and stuff that it makes it interesting enough just based on the design. All right. Thank that you. That will be my <laughs> final. <laughs> All right then. Uh, moving on. So this is a reflection in a place that I know very well because it's in my uh, hometown. It's in LA. Oh, really? the, yeah, this is in downtown LA. Uh, the there's a mural, uh, a very famous mural of uh, a woman in the background. Uh, I can uh, and I can bet you that the person is f photographing in the window of a Starbucks that's across the street from this mural. Uh, and this person, uh, and so so I, I see exactly how how this was made. And I think this is quite uh, creative and, and astute in terms of, you know, people, this is, you know, this is shot a lot. This is like showing me a photo of the Eiffel Tower. This is like the LA equivalent, you know, <laughs> to, to somebody <laughs> trying to do a photo of the, but, but it, I've never seen it done this way way and i think it you know it's a it's a self-portrait uh -huh. um that that is uh, quite creative and uh very layered and using reflections and so uh so anyway so if i go through my dim i would say the design is is quite successful here because you've got uh just a kind of reflection uh it's hard to know what's what but there's basically a reflection and you can see it's a mix of reflection and shooting through the glass um at a subject that's on the other side of the glass so it's a blend uh the photographer is basically using the fact that in any dark area the reflect the reflection will be less strong so the area where his camera is and part of his body he's making sort of a dark area that lets the camera see through the glass and then whatever is not shielded by his body is reflected so the rest of the photo is him and the reflection of what's behind him um i i actually use this in a current project this is a technique that i personally use in the project that i'm currently uh, still shooting although i'm, I'm almost done um in uh, this uh, ghost town called bodhi uh, in mm -hmm. California. So if people want to check that out, it's on my website. I don't use it for street. It's not street photography per se, because this is a ghost town. There's no, nobody lives there anymore. <laughs> uh, but, but I, I use this not for auto portraits, but I use it to photograph objects that are inside the, um, the abandoned buildings because they're full with old objects. And, and at the same time, capture the landscape outside. So I, I blend the two and they look like this. They look like double. People would think they're double exposures, but it's just playing with the reflection and the properties of, of reflected light. So um, I think it's quite creative to use that for street photography. And I think it's it's uh, the design of it is is well done here because you can see what what's happening in terms of there's enough separation between things uh, and he very carefully placed everything so that you can uh, easily distinguish that there's you know three different people or at least the representation of three different people so uh so i think that's that's quite successful and then the the i love what he did with the hands of the person at the counter behind the glass as well as his own hands on hands on the camera so there's a little bit of like there's almost uh kind of a mirror image of the of hands but it's of two different people so that that's uh that's pretty cool um i in terms of design and processing, maybe I would have liked to see the face of the photographer slightly more. I think that part could be uh, brightened a little bit. And this is a post process. It's more of a post processing issue. But um, so anyway, I, I like this design. The information in it is really just, uh, you know, 
it's it's a self portrait so that's that's really the information but it's a very creative self portrait uh and uh, it's almost like he has somebody like inside his <laughs> his body through the uh you know using the you know the reflection so uh so that that's pretty cool and then there's the person in the back so um the the information there is 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 just about a self portrait the moment um it's really the the moment of this it comes down to the moment of the person at the counter that's kind of almost like asleep or something or in deep meditation. And so that's, uh, that's really the, the moment here. But I think this is more about the design and playing with reflections. Um, but in this case, I think he pulled it off. I think this is one where the design is actually strong enough to carry the whole photo. Um, even though you do have a little bit of information and a little bit of a moment, I think this is one that's really based on design, but actually the design does work to carry the photo. So I like that a lot. I think that's very, uh, very clever and uh, great use of, of layering and, uh, um, and reflections. Um, and I'll, I'll just end on one thing just for people who are watching who kind of aspire to do more with reflections. I think th there's two things that are very common in street photography or opportunities for street photography that are reflections and shadows. You know, the, the streets, uh, urban environments are full of reflections in windows. Sometimes when it rains, there's puddles, all, you know, there's fountains, or all, all kinds of opportunities for reflections same thing with shadows you know depending on where the light hits and so on and people's uh shadows on the ground and our eye as humans we've evolved so that our eyes basically sort of discount the reflections in the shadows so it's very hard for us to see those unless we're we kind of retrain ourselves to see them so i think this is a case where i highly encourage people who kind of feel stuck maybe with their you know creative side uh in an urban environment they don't find anything interesting to photograph that sort of thing it's very common you know talking to my students and so on it's something people wrestle with and myself included uh and um, it, so those are tools, shadows and, and reflections are tools that we can all use. Uh, as long as we kind of retrain ourselves to see them, you really have to force yourself to see them and seek them out. Uh, they can they can make for for great, um, very creative, you know, different kind of looks. So I, you know, I highly if you're stuck in, in that mode of, <laughs> oh, I'm just going to find a nice background and wait for somebody to walk through it. You know, if you're in that mode, just you know, try look for more shadows and reflections. Uh, it, it it will open up your your horizons in terms of what can be done. All right, that that that's very interesting approach to shadows and reflections. Uh, all right then, uh, what do we think all about right. this one? So this is another uh, yeah very interesting. So this is somebody looks like he's taking a selfie or taking a photo of something. Um, there's a mural in the background. So this is a layered shot. It looks pretty heavily processed, but that it's done okay. Like it doesn't bother me too much. It has kind of a almost like a cartoonish style. It, it's almost not a photograph anymore because it's so processed. But somehow the processing, I think, sort of works for, for the subject matter here. So um, I uh, so in terms of the design, just you know, starting one thing at a time, <laughs> uh, I, I I like that the the subject in the on the right hand side is sort of working with the mural in the background. So um, there's some some kind of like mirror. It's almost like a mirror image where him and his phone, and then the background is this um, woman or or uh, young woman with a um, sort of a spray can spray can or something or she's hmm. aiming at the rocket like a, a picture of a rocket i don't know if she's drawing or anyway it, it, there's something between him holding his phone and her holding whatever she's holding that that works there's like a, a, a mirror sort of a mirror image there and i like that he's at the third and i like that she's at the third also it's a very kind of balanced image um the one thing i don't love in this design is is Maybe um, like the, his, the figure, the figure to ground is very good with her. You can very easily distinguish the mural and the, you know, she pops uh, in the mural. He's kind of in the, you can see his eyes and they're lit by sort of a little bit of, of light that's coming through a building or reflecting off a car or something. So his face is visible, 
but the rest of his body and his hat and everything else, and even his hand and the phone, it's a little bit hard to read. Why? Because, again, we're going back to figure to ground. And his figure, so I would say overall, I would argue that his figure to ground is not sufficient for somebody to just, you know, if you flash this photo for a second and you ask somebody what they saw, they may not even see him or they may not be able to distinguish enough of him to really mm. latch on to the photo and, and look further. So I would say this is, you know, it's it's really, it's really hard to make a subject pop. And in this case, I, I would argue that design wise, he doesn't pop enough. Uh, for for this to to really work on a on a design level, um, I also don't love you know. The, so he doesn't pop enough. But then one thing that there's if you look at other bright areas in that part of the image, um, you see the car and uh, you see that it's a Kia, <laughs> yeah. and you can read the license plate. Like so so that car is actually pretty well lit, even though he's not. So he's fighting with a non-subject that is also very, you know, because the depth of field is very good. Cause I guess the person was trying to layer things, you know, you want to layer him with the, the mural in the background. So you have to keep a decent depth of field, but as a consequence, everything, everything else in the frame is also very sharp, uh, including that car that's very well lit. That's right behind him. So, so as you're trying to read him, you just, your eye just keeps going to that car because that's what our eyes do. They go to the bright parts of the image. That's again, you know, we can't, it's hard to fight that, that, um, you know, this is evolution that that got us to 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 <laughs> to to go to shiny objects, bright objects. So uh, when he's fighting against this background of a car, this is um, it's it's hard to to distinguish him. It makes it even harder. Um, so that's an, uh, that's one thing I don't love about the design. Also, um, I would say the I, I was saying that the processing was well done. But I, I do see that there's a little bit too much vignetting. Mm -hmm. So like you can see at the top, especially at the bottom is hard to know because it's kind of naturally vignetted by the shadow in the street. Uh, there's a lot of shade there. But at the top, you can see that it should be bright. You know, the, the left side of that mural should be just as bright as the center. And then you can see also the sky at the top. Uh, right should also be just as bright as it is behind the buildings and it's unnaturally sort of really heavily vignetted and I, I would say it's okay to vignette I, I love vignetting as a tool to really bring the eye back to the you know to the center and to the subject but in this case it's just it's just too much there's way too much vignetting I would bring that down a little bit and, and make it a little more natural um, Another so just keeping on the design there there's not a lot that's interesting and in, there's the whole if you if you cut this frame in four pieces you know top top left top right bottom left bottom right the whole bottom left quarter of the frame basically nothing mm -hmm. it's it's void of any information of any subject of any visual interest and it has a one of the brightest part of the image in it uh, which is that you know the lamp post uh, the bottom of the lamp post and the 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 planter, uh, that whole area is super bright and completely devoid of any interest or information. So that's also not not ideal. You know, some good, some bad. Uh, Information-wise, it's fairly simple, but it's kind of interesting, I would say, just because of the mirror image of like what he's doing versus what she's doing, and your your mind, as long as you find him, uh, you're you know because he's 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 kind of camouflaged in in this background. But if you find the guy doing the selfie, then you start you know trying to your mind starts thinking like what you know what is the relationship between the two? Is he doing something like what she's doing? Is I like that part. It makes you go into this information sort of rabbit hole where you're you're you know you're starting to think about what this is about so this is good uh, moment wise it's the moment of him taking the selfie and and i guess the fake moment of her painting whatever she's painting so i like that too so i think overall it's it's a good image that has kind of all three aspects which is neat but i would say there's a lot of design issues with it mainly because of the figure to ground of the of the main subject and then s some things that can be remed remedied like the you know the vignetting mm. uh, it's just a post-processing issue um i would also you know if it were me i, I would definitely darken that car um, you know, in post-processing, just so you can't, you know, you can barely read the logo and the license plate, and because you can, you can dodge and burn. That's that's totally okay. You can't like start photoshopping stuff uh, out of the picture, but 
that car in and all his it's kind of you know very visible reflections and everything that can be darkened uh more to to really you know kind of fade into the background more and as you do that the subject will pop slightly more over those buildings so that's um that's something i would try if this this were my my image all right so anyway that's for, for what it's worth <laughs> thank you uh so what do you think about this one all right so this is uh an interest so okay so we'll, we'll go through uh design first uh so these are geese i guess um by a bridge uh in some it looks like a german town or some kind of like uh old town in the background and this is a very old bridge maybe it could be in france it's somewhere in europe for sure this isn't doesn't <laughs> this is nothing like what we have in the u.s <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, too, we're too new um so the person tried to play with the design uh, of so there's like a couple of tools being used here. It, the The foreground is completely blurred out, but you can still distinguish that it's the neck of a uh, one of those geese in the foreground and and it's kind of reaffirmed by all the geese laying in the in the background. I hope they're geese because otherwise I'm oh, I'll look swan, <laughs> stupid I think. there. This one, okay, yeah. okay, all right. So just swap, uh, do this uh, search and replace for <laughs> geese for for swan. I don't know if they're swans. I think their necks are long, long enough for swans. But maybe, okay. Well, I'll call them birds. I think okay, everybody okay. will agree on, on <laughs> birds. <laughs> this is uh, how much you know. My wild wildlife uh, 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 knowledge is not not that good. So um, I think it's it's interesting. To, so the use, it, you know, there's a creative use of of uh, a blur and uh, and the you know uh, contrast between blur and, and and sharp areas and and uh, here I think it's it's done well enough because you can still dis even though the foreground is blurry you can still distinguish what it is except that it, especially in the context of everything that's behind it. Um, so do I, you think it I wouldn't think work without other swans? If if it, no, this was just you could the still, only, you, you'd still distinguish it, but it's nice that it's being backed up by by the background, okay. and there's sort of an echoing of that same shape in the background. So it, that's it, what's nice is it takes your eye. I think it, your eye just wants to go to what's blurry first, and and struggles with it a little bit because it's blurry, and then you and then but the fact that it's blurry moves your eye to the background. And then starts less letting you explore the rest of the frame, including finding that village in the background and the people on the bridge. It's nice, you know. I was saying earlier, you want people to linger on your photos. You don't want them to just be stuck and move on. The use, the creative use of uh, this blur in the foreground does that. It, it because the subject is so big, you first go there, but then you realize it's blurry, and then you go to the rest. So I think it's successful in making the eye travel the image and that's an important it's 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 important for you know people to stay on your photo so um so th this is it's well done in that respect uh i i like that the the face of the swan is or the bird <laughs> is in the middle um i you know i think this is it looks very deliberate and it, it's you know so the design is well done from that perspective the bridge is hanging at about the third at least the top of the bridge is at about the third so that works because it leaves a third sky there's a little bit of texture in the sky with those clouds and so on so it, it has it has that aspect so and the tonal palette is is nice you know it goes from basically all white uh from the swans and there's some very almost black area so there's an interesting uh tonality to to this image so um so i'd say the design is well done i i um i i like you know the the actual you know the actual design i think what makes it work and where it wouldn't have worked um otherwise is that the head of the bird is completely above the bridge and not touching anything else uh it's almost touching that little post at uh -huh. the beak at the, the point of the beak but not quite and the fact that it's completely like the figure to ground is completely pristine uh makes it work um, if if the the bird had been at the same level as the bridge, like basically, uh, uh, you know, it's completely on, on top of, of uh, the bridge, I, it wouldn't have worked at all. I think that that would have been that would have completely killed the shot. But the fact that the, the head is completely above, really sticking out and not touching anything um, is what makes this shot basically that's it's that's the the thing that it rests on so um so i think the design is is well executed 
I think the the information, you know, is one of those things where the information is not that important. It's just, you know, okay, it's a bunch of birds by the river. Uh, and, and there are layers so you can sort of see where it is and, you know, the kind of place that it is and, and that sort of thing. But that, you know, there's not like anything transcending about the information. And, and the moment is, is more about the placement of the subject uh, than than the moment, so it's it's there's not really a, a strong moment. It's really more about the fact that this where things are placed in the image. So again, it, it, we we get you know you get a lot of these images that are just based on design, uh, and that's okay. Um, I, I I like this type of work, and you know I I see a lot of it in my students' uh, work typically when they. To do street photography and there's nothing wrong with that as long as the design is solid i think it's pretty solid in this case i think it's a it's a good design and again just like we saw with the previous image where there was a creative use of reflections uh and very clever placement of different things in the image and and very good composition i think this is the same can be said here that it's uh also pretty you know cleverly done with the use of of uh, blur and that sort of thing um, if I had just one kind of nitpicky thing to say is it would have been even better if there weren't any birds right behind the neck of that bird. Mm. It, there's a part of the neck that's almost merging with some back of a bird, like about halfway um, down the neck. Uh, you know, if it was all like dark ground, you know, and, and water around that neck and the neck was completely just clear of every anything that behind it, uh, except for the bridge, of course, that would have been perfect this is almost there uh but not not quite so anyway <laughs> that's the only kind of uh you know nitpicky thing i could say about the design here all right you're welcome all right so uh, to the last shot right i wanted to do <laughs> <laughs> oh you want to show me my own stuff <laughs> uh, well this one is absolutely perfect <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if people will see it, in, uh, but this is from, from here. So this is my uh, 2018 book uh, on Venice Beach, and this is the cover uh, cover shot. So um, do you really want me to <laughs> critique <laughs> Uh, critique this i mean i can go i, I mean i i used it i used my the same criteria for my own work so i i eat my own dog dog food as 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 we say here i in mean the US. you used it because you liked it right but there there uh, is there something you you would you know improve or you know do differently or whatever no, I, I mean about I this one no, I think it's, you know, fr frankly, I think it's, you know, the reason it's on the cover is that I, I find it pretty, pretty perfect. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's not it's not just, you know, skill or whatever. It, it's just luck. Um, I think the reason people photograph a lot of, you know, backgrounds with somebody walking in front of it is because there's often not a lot going on in cities and it's hard to do street photography and find great moments. And that day I was blessed with an incredible scene <laughs> and, um, and I don't think I appreciated it for what it was like for how rare it was. I, you know, it was one of the first times that I was getting serious about shooting in Venice. And I, when I stumbled upon the scene of this woman and her five-year-old son, uh, playing with these snakes in the sand, I, I didn't know how rare that was. I just assumed, oh, it's Venice. It must be happening every day. And I have never, you know, in what has it been? Uh, the book came out in 18. This is an image I shot, I think, in 16, 2016. So it's been five, six years since this photo. And I've been to Venice, you know, almost weekly and since. And I've never bumped into a scene like this ever again in six years since this you know, moment has passed. And so, you know, this is just to say, sometimes it, it, it's not just the skill and so on. It, a lot of it is luck of finding what you find that day in the street. And, um, but you create that luck in a way by going out often and kind of knowing where to look. You know, obviously I wasn't going to boring areas of LA. I had done a lot of that and I hadn't had any success or not much success. Um, and, and I ended up finding Venice as, as a much more inspiring place. And so that's why I was going there that day and I kept going there a lot. And then eventually I bumped into interesting stuff that en ended up in the book. Um, so <laughs> just to, you know, 
this is this is a, this is an image. The reason I like it so much is because um, it, it it has the design that, that is you know I don't think I would change much about this design. Um, and then um, it it the information is just captivating and you know makes you trying to think of all kinds of stories that may or may not what happened, but who cares? This is you know your mind will start thinking about you know things that that. You know, is this uh, a biblical Adam and Eve, you know, moment? Is it like you know, there's all these things that just kind of are um, that come to people's minds when when they look at this photo. And then the moment of this woman facing the snake is 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 also, you know, kind of epic. So it has all of those three elements on, you know, uh, on steroids. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the design is on steroids. The information is on steroids and the moment is on steroids. And I think that's what makes it such a great image. And, you know, to the point of being on the cover of the book. But um, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I wish I could make more of, you know, more images like this. I, and I would if I could, uh, honestly, but this is, you know, this is pretty much what I aspire to. Uh, and uh, I very, you know, 99.999% of the time fail to, to uh, actually achieve. So, <laughs> but thanks for reminding me what I should do, be doing more, more of. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this, this image, I think, embodies why this method of DIM really works you know for street photography at least in, in my mind is when you hit the ball out of the park you know to use a baseball analogy that may not resonate with all you know the european side and, and other the americans will be oh yeah 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 uh but everybody else will be like what's baseball uh, but if if you if you knock the ball out of the park in in all three you know d i and m you end up with, you know, something that can be on, on the cover of, of a book that that's, you know, you can still, you know, make great images without all three. But when you do, it's, you know, it just it just sings. So that's, you know, that's I guess what I'll leave you on with, with this one. Thank you very much for your analysis. And thank you very much for the in-depth critique. Uh, all right. It was You're very welcome. enlightening. A anytime. <laughs> Happy to entertain. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you very much for joining me today and uh, I wish you the best with with your upcoming projects. I teach uh, in-person workshops with Leica or, and, and, you know, other workshops that I do myself and I don't have any scheduled right now, but if people are interested in, in taking a workshop with me in the future, they can email me and I'll put them on a list that will get uh, notified when I, when I do have workshops. All right. Perfect. So thank you're you. welcome. Thank it's you very much. And uh, looking forward to see you next time. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Martin. T take care.